Hello, and welcome to Old Toy, New Joy, the show where I share with you my previously enjoyed toys I purchased from online sources, thrift stores, and collector shows that once belonged to someone else. Today I thought it'd be fun to talk about one of my favorite hockey card sets of all time, the 1989-90 OPG and Tops. This was the last year that OPG and Tops would be the only card manufacturers as the hockey card boom had already begun. And the following year, the market would become increasingly saturated uh, with the appearance of other card manufacturers, such as Bowman, Score, Proset, Upper Deck, OPG Premier, and the appearance of subsets, such as Top Prospects. This would be known as the junk wax era, where the market um, saw supply heavily outweigh demand, and by the mid-1990s, collectors just couldn't keep up, and they didn't care. But anyways, the 1989-1990 set is a beautiful set, and OPG produced 330 cards for their set, and Topps produced 189 cards. And the top set featured mostly American team players, while the OPG set had more Canadian team players. And the OPG set had over 50 rookie cards in it, and we'll look at some of those today. But uh, this was the first set in 10 years that didn't have a white border. It's got that nice gray ice. Uh, border on the sides and then on the top and bottom it's got the sort of condition sensitive blue that reminds me of the borders from the 1979-80 set which featured Wayne Gretzky's rookie card and once you put a card in a top loader or a sleeve you risk banging up the corners a bit and then the white shows immediately and then that card goes down several grades. Also um, we saw the production of box bottoms, which I have here. And we'll take a look at those as well. These were on the bottom of the boxes. Boxes had 36 packs of cards in them. And if you were lucky enough to get a box, um, you could cut out the bottoms. And they were a little bit different from the regular cards. They featured a different photo and a uh, different set of stats. But you know what? Let's start with the rookies. So here's the most desirable card from both the OPG and Top set, uh, the Joe Sackick rookie. And Top's cards were a little more scarce than OPG, so they're a little pricier by maybe 10 to 20 percent. But still, they were overproduced by this point, so it's easy. It's easy enough and inexpensive enough to get a complete set of tops or a complete set of OPG. And when the most valuable card can be bought for anywhere from $5 to $10, you know um, it's not an expensive set. So here's Joe Sackick's rookie. And when I was younger and collecting these, tops were more available in my area, so I had a ton of tops Joe Sackick rookies. I had an album full of them, mostly tops. Next up, is Theo Fleury, not yet in the Hall of Fame, but perhaps one day. Extremely ferocious and talented player, even though he was like five foot seven. Uh, probably the second most viable card in the set is the Brian Leach rookie card, Hall of Famer, like Joe Sackick. And here we have, not in the Hall of Fame, but I think he's considered uh, the greatest Vancouver Canuck of all time, Trevor Linden, his rookie card. And then we have the rookie cards of Tony Granado, Captain Kirk McLean, Gary Roberts. 
Steve Larmer, and many, many more. And then there were also the cards of superstars who had been around for a few years already. Doug Gilmore, Chris Chelios, Pat LaFontaine. This is one of my favorite cards. I remember I used to stare at this card to figure out what was going on. This is Joe Neuendijk, and because there's a player right behind him, it kind of looks like Joe Neuendijk is really wide. And I remember thinking as a kid, why is he so big? He's not. This is the player behind him. It's pretty funny, though. My favorite, of course, Marc Messier. Luke Robitaille. Brendan Shanahan. And this was the last active year of uh, Lanny McDonald. We won the Stanley Cup that year with the Flames. And then we have the box bottoms. And card manufacturers uh, were making box bottoms for their boxes beginning around 1985, ending in around, I think, 1993. And so in this case, while some box bottoms in the past have been blank on the back, these box bottoms had stats. And these were actually the scoring leaders for each team. And there was four panels available in all. I have two intact panels here, and then I have cards from a third panel. So we're going to, I have some of the regular cards and we'll compare them um, to the photos of the box panels. First, we'll take a look at one of my favorite cards from this set. On the right hand side, we have Brett Hull's card. And by this point, he had already um, implanted himself as a goal-scoring phenom, and he was quite popular with fans. Um, his regular card has a pretty exciting photo on it. And if you'll notice by looking at this set in general, most of the photos were taken uh, when players were just maybe in a pre-skate, like a warm-up stance, or in between plays. There's not a lot of action. Some of them are just kind of standing around. There's not opposing team players in the way. I mean, you can see with the Brett Hall here, his goaltender is standing erect, not looking ready. So I'm, and Brett doesn't have his helmet on. So I'm thinking he was just warming up, even though he looks like he's sort of in an exciting pose there. Like he just stopped quickly and maybe he's ready to like catch a pass or he just took a shot. I don't know. And then with his box panel, he's just standing there. Uh, skating around slowly. So in this case, the regular card is a little more exciting than the box panel card. But as you can see in the back, got a ton of information on the regular card. And then the box panel card just kind of recaps his goals, assists, and points. And then on the left here, we have a tops version of Magnificent Mario. And uh, he was still going strong. He had a good year that year. Uh, probably that was his best ever 199 points. That's the closest he ever got to 200 points And I think he was relatively healthy because he played 76 games um, And then there's his box panel and you'll notice that they whoever owned this previously I think I found this one at a thrift store did not attempt to cut it Which is good because a lot of the time you'll see the cards out there. They've been hand cut and they're kind of crooked and uh, if you just leave them intact, you don't have to sort of worry about that. So you'll notice in the box panel card, he's about to take a face off. He's got his helmet on. It's game time. And um, with the regular card, he's just sort of skating around warming up. And then we have the two Thomas Sandstroms. The two Peter Skrikos. And the two Mike Ridleys. And I know I have a Yara Curry and a Cam Neely somewhere, but I can't seem to find them. But here's the two box panels for those guys. And then we've got Steve Larmer's regular card in the box panel. And the great Steve Eiserman regular card in the box panel. So thank you so much for tuning in today to Old Toy New Joy and allowing me to share my 1989-90 Tops and OPG hockey cards. If you like the video, please like the video, and we will keep them coming. 
Uh, in the meantime, I encourage you to visit other episodes of Old Toy New Joy. You might see something that interests you, something that sparks a fond memory, or perhaps you want to get into the hobby yourself. I feature such things as Transformers, G.I. Joe, Wrestling Figures, Star Wars, Ninja Turtles, Thundercats, Pogs, Sports Cards, Comics, Hot Wheels, and much, much more. Until next time, this is your Toy Whisperer saying farewell from Old Toy, New Joy.